Well, there are two broad objectives. One was to try to understand better why storms produce a lot of positive cloud to ground flashes. We think that's related to severe weather, it's related to storm intensity, and so part of our purpose was to try to understand the conditions for producing those flashes. Specifically, we achieved this by making measurements inside the clouds using balloons and combining this with radar and lightning mapping and other sensor outputs. The other part was to start looking at electrification of mesoscale convective systems. We've done a lot of work with balloons alone in the past, but looking at the interrelationship of kinematics or the microphysics, how winds move and how particles form, and relating that to the wind field and to the lightning, getting a total picture was a big part of our purpose. The data for Telex were collected using a number of sensors. We relied very much on radar, including the state-of-the-art polarimetric radar, which allows us to determine the kinds of particles that are inside the storms. We also had very high-resolution dual Doppler data taken in Telex. This consisted of two mobile radars that would drive close to the storm and then scan very rapidly through the storm to give us the very fast evolving characteristics of the storm. We used the Oklahoma Lightning Mapping Array, which is unique to the central Oklahoma. That was one of the central or core instruments for Telex. It allowed us to look at the structure of lightning inside of clouds as well as seeing things outside of clouds, which is what we normally see. So that allows us then to look at where lightning is relative to updrafts, relative to the rain coming out of the storm, relative to severe weather. A big part of what we did relied upon taking instruments up into the storms on unmanned balloons, so-called weather balloons. Then we had the ballooning systems, which carried our systems for measuring the thermodynamics of storms, the temperature, winds, humidity, and so on, as well as measuring the electrical properties of storms so that we could tell where there are high electrical forces in storms, things that would cause lightning to occur. We also had an environmental sounding system that allows us to look at the conditions for producing the storms, and this is important for helping us with modeling later on to try to understand how all these things work together. A typical day would begin with the forecaster taking a look at the weather. The forecasting starts early in the day and goes through the entire mission. We used information from our so-called nowcaster, which is what the forecaster becomes once we go on a mission, who provides guidance to us in the field. Along about 12.30, we would have a weather briefing and that weather briefing then would be where the forecaster would present the day's outlook to the rest of the principal investigators in the uh, project. So we would discuss strategy then. Do we try to aim for late afternoon? Do we try to go late at night? Uh, when do we expect storms to occur? How does that fit in with our objectives? How do we address those storms? Once that decision has been made, then we start getting ready. If we're going to go out late afternoon, we have to start getting ready faster. If we are not expecting to operate that day, then we can wait and do things in a more relaxed fashion. So we continue to monitor the data, looking at how the weather is developing, where storms are starting to pop up, and then about an hour or two before we expect to actually have to be in position, we try to make a decision that yes, we are going to go out here to this particular location and try to take data. And so everybody then deploys all the mobile crews, which would be the ballooning crew, uh, the environmental ballooning crew, as well as the electrical ballooning crew, and then the mobile radars. <music> 
so we have to go out and, and adjust our positioning to fit where the storms are coming because in the case of the ballooning crews, we have to get balloons right up into the storm. We have to be on the storm. In the case of the two radar crews, they have to be back a little bit so that they can look at the storm and scan through it. In the case of the environmental sounding crew, they have to be well back from the storm, but close enough so that they can get, sample the air that's going into the storm. And so all these things have to be coordinated by the different crews, but most importantly by the nowcaster who's standing there looking at the radar and watching how things are developing, looking at all kinds of data. The entire Telex program, I think, had about 30 people involved in any one mission. Uh, the ballooning effort requires uh, 13 or 14 people to carry it off in a way we, that we like and the optimal way for us to balloon is where we can put balloons up very quickly one behind the other. So it takes launch crews and balloon inflation crews operating at the same time. It's a very complicated effort to inflate and get a balloon loaded with instruments and get it up in what's sometimes very windy conditions and to do it quickly. The crews are extremely valuable and they include both volunteers uh, as well as members of our own research group here. We have people from the University of Oklahoma, we have people from National Severe Storms Laboratory, some folks came down from University of Washington, from New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology. So th there was a great team of people working together and each of them contributing an important part to the field program. It was the first time that we had very high resolution Doppler radar data, lightning mapping data, and electric field sensors on the same storm anywhere. We launched into about 14 storms and we launched a total of 36 instruments into the storms. Some of those gave us not only information on the way up but also on the way down as the instruments came down on the parachutes. And for example, that allowed us in one supercell to get eight soundings through the same storm, which is absolutely a first. I think we met the objectives of the field program, which was what this year was mostly about, in ways that are bigger and better than ever before. I think it's highly successful, and we've looked at the data enough to know that we've got something there. It's, it's not just wishful thinking. This has been one of the most successful field programs I've ever been involved in. It was very frustrating at times because we had a couple periods of drought, but then the storms broke loose and from the end of May on it has just been a merry-go-round. It's been a great experience. It was the most difficult one I've ever been involved in, both here in, in Great Plains and, and other places in the country. And I think the early indications suggest that it's the most successful one that we've ever conducted.